Hey beautiful people of the Most High God, so this is a lesson and a teaching from God for you people. He wants me to talk to you a little bit about the reason why Christ died for our sins. Because we know, everybody knows Christ died for the sins of the world. But he wants you to know that he was going to wipe out all of his creation because he regretted making them because how wicked they turned out because in the beginning he said they were good and they were blessed and they turned away from all of that so if you read genesis you're going to see that god said we were good and we were blessed and creation just went very evil and turned away from him so with christ dying he saved creation's life he died for the sins of the world because we basically, God was going to, like, you know, when you're writing on a paper and you make your first draft and it doesn't come out good and you crumple up the paper and you toss it out, that's what he was going to do with us. And Christ, seeing this, and the holy angels and the spirit of mercy started to cry out to God not to destroy you. And Christ stood up and said that he would die for your sins. He would die for everyone's sins. He would die for the killers. He'll die for the whorelets. He'll die for the prostitutes. He'll die for the frauds. He'll die for the thieves. He'll die for the pedophiles. He'll die for the reapers. He'll die for the covetous. Every sin, every the most abominable thing you could think of, he died for. The people who practice dark arts and witchcraft. He died for the people's secret societies. You name it. He Anything you could think of, he died for it. He died for your worstest enemy, your biggest enemy, who you think is your enemy. He died for your children, your mom, your dad, your auntie, your uncle. Maybe somebody molested you. Maybe somebody raped you. He even died for them too because we f we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. So the, the person you're seeing, you're actually fighting the spirit that's within them. And Christ knows that. So God was going to just X out his creation altogether and, and make a new one. He could have made new man. That's why Christ told you he could make these children out of stones if he wanted to. He was going to wipe everything out and just make a new creation. And Christ pleaded our cause. And he died for all of the, the most atrocious things you could think of someone ever did to you or you have ever heard. He died for that too. So that's what he wants you to know. And he wants me to go through these few scriptures. And if anybody's in secret society are bound with Satan and evil covenants that done in their family or dedication, to give you the scriptures for you to break free from them. And also to say, um, I break it from my generational line, my lineage and my ancestors going back to Adam to, to this day. All right. So God just wants you to know he loves you, his creation, so much. And Christ loves you so much. And he doesn't want you to perish. That's why he said, repent or perish. And Christ gave, is the intercessor of your life that gave you of uh, that mediator gave you a way back to God when he said, I am done with this creation. Do you get it now? Now, Romans 8 and 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. Because we sinned, that requires death. Christ didn't want us to die. That's how holy God is. Now, 1 John 2 and 2, and he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only. So not just our sins, your enemy's sins, the person you don't like, your neighbor's sins, people who hurt you, he died for them too. Everybody, that's why everyone is supposed to come to a forgiveness. Because if Christ forgave your enemy, the person you don't like, and you, the molester, the rapist, you name it, if he forgave them, the killer, the robber, the prostitute, the whorelet, the thief. If he forgave them, Christ died for their sins. That means you can forgive everybody who hurt you. Christ died for the sins of the world, of the most atrocious sins of everyone. But also for the sins of the whole world. 
That's why he says, love one another and forgive one another, because we all fell short of the glory. Now, John 3 and 17, for God sent his, not his son into the world to condemn it. So Christ never came here to condemn you for your sin. He didn't. But that the world through him might be saved. He was here. He came to save your life. He came to save God's creation that God was about to be done away with if he never put down his life to save it. Matthew 6 and 14. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Mark 11 and 12. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Why? Christ died for the most atrocious things. Your enemy, my enemy, your neighbors, your friends, your children, you name it. The most atrocious, the criminals, all God's creation. That what? Because God never sent him into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved because God was going to discard us. Galatians 1 and 4, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father. Now, John 8 and 24, I said therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins, that's if you don't forgive and if you don't forsake them. And if you don't, you know, forgive your enemies. Move on and heal from the things people have done to you. Because if Christ died for all of this, all of the things of the world, you must can forgive. For if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. He made a way for you out of this. He made a way for you out of this. Now to be free from evil covenants, lodges, secret societies, and all the, and Satan and powers of evil and any evil entity that people have got their self entangled with or is operating in their family or in their households. God wants you to know to say these words, um, these scriptures, Hosea 13 and 14. I will ransom them from the power of the grave because those things that you, those things are things of the grave, things of death. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plague. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from my eyes for death. So it's gone. God wants you to know that he will ransom you from the power of the grave and redeem you from death. Baptize. Now, Isaiah 28 and 18. And your covenant, so all your evil covenants you have with Satan, principalities and powers, the wicked lodges, you name it. You know the wicked things that you've got yourself into and who you made oaths and agreements with. I don't. God does. You know. So these are the scriptures he wants you to know and read and pray out to him. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, done with. And your agreement, all your evil agreements, oaths, vows, with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then you shall be trotted down by it. He wants you to use these scriptures to, dis to break those covenants, break those agreements, break all the things you have that are not of him. Because in the word it says, he sent his word and healed us. That's in Psalms 107. You have to know the word of God to have it to deliver you, right? And these two scriptures, um, Doctrine and Covenants 54 and 4. And as the covenant which they made unto me has been broken, that's to break those covenants, even so it has become void and of none effect. So all your evil covenants and things that you got yourself into now with these scriptures is void and of none effect. And also you got to use the blood of the lamb. Now doctrine and covenants 103 and 33, break it off. This is another scripture he wants you to use. Break it off. O oh Lord, break it off from the necks of thy servants by the power that we may rise up in the midst of this generation and do thy work. Now, and these to be made free from all of it. John 8 and 36. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Romans 6 and 18. Being then made free. Oh, sorry. Um, being then made free from sin. You became the servants of righteousness. So you should baptize and be free. Wash yourself and be free. Wash yourself and clean. R Romans 6 and 22. 
But now, being made free from sin and being servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. So that's what you get. You're now free from sin. These are the scriptures to make you free from those things that you got yourself entangled with. And God wants you to be free. And he wanted you to know in depth why Christ died for the sins of the world. Because he was going to discard all of it and just start new. But thank you, beautiful people. Uh, may God bless you and keep you. And he sent his word and healed them. I hope this word healed you and helps you. And you break every chain and you break free from every evil covenant and everything that's whole, that of darkness. And you walk into his light. Stay blessed, stay encouraged, and keep persevering and keep pushing forward. I love you all.